In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's a hard thing to get to the point of reassessing a whole relationship or rethinking completely whether you or I have gotten a major idea, a whole thing wrong. Especially it's something like an issue of politics or of faith or a major personal relationship. Have you ever been at the point where you had to reassess a position that you had held comfortably for years? Perhaps even didn't think about it. Or perhaps have you ever discovered that a friend or a family member was not honest to you? Was doing something wildly different than you thought everything that you knew about that person. Sometimes these things start like a small crack in the wall or something troubling that you notice and think about and then mentally bat it away. You think, no, that idea has good foundations or I know him. That's odd. But I've known him a long time. Except when this happens, over time, those little cracks, the odd, not good behaviors, keep showing up until you have to notice, you have to see there's a problem. Of course, sometimes also, the discovery that you were wrong about someone or wrong about a position can be a complete collapse in seconds. Like that horrible mining tailing dam that broke in Brazil and that terribly swept away a town in seconds. One minute people were having lunch and the next they're swept away and buried or running for their life up a hill. I've had a couple of those occasions. Have you? The whole landscape changes in a second. But whether it is a change that caused is from seconds or it is that sequence of disturbing behavior that finally brings you to the point that you realize, I was totally wrong, or I never knew her, I guess, or my political or my business position doesn't work, it's wrong. It's a hard place to be on your face, as it were, in the dirt. The comfort of the familiar has been ripped away. You look around and realize that there is a totally new landscape, whether of relationship or position, and you didn't see it. Now, of course, some people cannot and will not take the change. They retreat into believing what was true in the past, and despite everything they go through, they pretend it never happened. And I'm thinking about this because, among other things, we learn frequently to trust God and accept God's love and God in Christ's understanding of our relationship with God. And sometimes it's piece by piece, and sometimes it's sudden, and we're swept away. I love the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. We watch it most every Christmas. But it's theology of grace for the angel 
who at the very end of the movie gets his wings. That theology is awful. It's positively unchristian because you don't earn your salvation. We're given it. We can accept God's love. But a lot of us underneath, we're always still trying to figure out how we can earn our relationship with God. And part of the problem is because so many other things in life we do have to earn. We do keep track of what I call the, you do something for me, I do something for you. And many Christians even think that you do something for God, then God is obliged to do something for you. And St. Paul wrote to the Romans about this very tendency. And here, early in this letter, in chapter 4, he points out that the very father of the Jewish people, Abraham, did not get to be the father of many nations by spectacular good behavior, but only because God chose him and gave him the call. God offers grace to Abram, and actually then he changes his name, and he changes Sarai's name, so Abraham becomes Abraham, father of multitudes, and Sarah, my princess, becomes the princess because of the role that God gives them in being the source of nations and kings. The whole thing is God's action. The only thing that Abraham does, even, but it's very significant, even as he accepts the idea and laughs at it that an old geezer like himself could have a child at close to a hundred with his old wife. But notice, as he laughs, he uses Sarah's new name. And by that, shows that he accepts God's plans for him and his wife, despite all the uncertitude and the appearances to the contrary. He trusts God. Paul brings forward this very ancient account from Genesis to show that God still works the same way for us and for those he wrote to. God offers us life unexpectedly. We just have to drop the junk in our hands and accept it. And that does mean that we have to change how we see the world. We have to admit that we were wrong about this idea that I do something for you and you do something for me. And we have to earn every step of our way with God. Of course, St. Paul had believed the earn your way to a relationship with God, but he figured it out one day on the road to Damascus when the Lord renamed him from Saul to Paul. And at that very moment, the very point that Saul of Tarsus was planning to stamp out every one of Jesus' followers that he could find, that was the moment he discovered he was dead wrong about Jesus. And despite that, that Jesus and God loved him. His whole landscape changed in that seconds on the road. And if you learn this notion, you'll see that Jesus himself taught it when he said that God allows the sun to, draw, to shine on both the just and the unjust. And his parables, such as that of the parable of the two sons or the parable of the laborers in the vineyard all point to this idea that we don't have to earn it. 
And Jesus deliberately did that so he would offend our sense of keeping even counts. I do this, you do that. But God does this. And our relationship with God starts with, I give you this, my love, even though you haven't done anything to earn it. I give you a call on your life, starting now. God expects change, but not because we've earned it. The gift of love that God gives us is still there, no matter how we act, no matter how bad we are or how good we are. The problem is, with bad acting, is the worse we act, the less able most of us are able to accept God's love. And usually, slowly, the love of even other people. So, fold your cards early. Accept the love of Christ and walk into the news. And we have to keep doing that. Because we're always trying to go back to that, I do this, you do that. Isn't that right, God? It's hard to keep our eyes on the prize that we already have life. We already have the love of God and the gift of God's love in a world where everybody else is still doing transactions. I do this, you do that. But we have God's love. The hard part, actually, is continuing to live knowing that that is true. When the whole economic and political world, and sometimes even the world of our family, acts as if it was not true. But we know it is. We don't need to keep score anymore, not with God and not with other people. Now is the time to laugh with Abraham and trust that everything we thought we knew is changed by this tremendous lover who will not let us go, who does not need anything that we have to offer and yet who offers us the gift of life and invites us that we live differently now that Christ has changed our landscape. Laugh and accept it and reset how you walk with God. And you'll probably have to do it three to four times a week. Amen.